So in this case study, we have a contorted cherry. Uh, this is a nursery stock. It's never been worked on before. It has some definite challenges, which we'll be talking about, and we'll try and mitigate some of them. We might not be able to correct all the problems, and I have a, a solution to, to offer uh, once we get to that point. So in the previous lecture, we talked about fruiting and flowering, how to manage them and encourage fruits and flowers. Here, we're going to ignore all that. Uh, we're trying to set the, the bones of this to become a bonsai, uh, which might be 15 years from now. So we're going to punt all of the, uh, the, the prettiness of this down the road a little bit. So contorted cherry is a lot of fun. It has some really interesting eclectic sort of movement. And yet we're going to have to cut some of that off in order to gain other things. There's a couple areas here that I think we can't do much with. Contorted cherry is very hard. It's very, very stiff. Even these, these smaller branches are very hard to actually make movement in. We can shift their position, but we can't put movement in them. So branches or trunks that are that big, we have almost no ability to change. So these two, I think, probably have to go out of this design. If we do that, we have another problem that arises. <laughs> I'd like to leave this, and I'd like to leave that, and in so doing, we have a bit of a circular thing going on here. So we might have to try and open that up a little bit. We, we might cut part of this off. Um, this is the part that I think is going to cause problems down the road and that we might have uh, uh, another thought on how to correct that, and I'll offer that in just a little bit. So although fall would be my ideal time to do this kind of work, um, this is not a bad time. Early spring, the leaves are just beginning to think about coming out. In the fall, the reason that's my favorite time to do major pruning is that the plant is all balanced again. The hormones are all balanced by the time spring comes along and it wants to grow. Um, if you cut it this time of year, we get long extensions, which means long internodes. It's a little, little harder to control. But if we cut in the fall, those internodes tend to be a bit more moderated. When you do work like this, heavy pruning, you want to assess the energy of the plant to be sure that the tree can withstand it. So we want to be sure that it has some long extensions, which would indicate a lot of healthy root growth underneath, and this plant has that. If you were to work on a plant that didn't display that kind of thing, we would be setting it back maybe even a year. So the momentum of the plant would be lost if we mistime the strong pruning. Okay, now we're gonna take these two trunks off. I'm gonna use a saw. This is really hard wood, so this is gonna take a little while. One of the things about cherry is that you can leave some deadwood features on it. And this is, this is going to be a hard transition. We're, we're going to have a harder time closing it up, so we might actually want to create a little, little shari line down there. It's kind of like ume in that regard, where you, you can often see some, some shari on the trunk, kind of a gray wood. Not the bright silvery kind of wood that you might see on a juniper. So we've cut off our, our two large trunks, and I'll give it a spin so you can get a sense of what remains on this plant. We don't really have a front yet. We're still just looking for structure. Could be over here, front could be over here. One of the things that I mentioned earlier was this circular thing. So I think we need a... Um, we need some kind of a prop in there. We might not be able to get it too far apart because this is really stiff, but we'll try and put something in there. 
Um, and then we might make another prune or two, but we don't want to do much more than this uh, because of how much we took off. Okay, I'm going to put a little support between these two branches where our brace is going to go. It's just a little piece of rubber um, just to prevent any kind of cambial damage. So we put a little brace in there to separate these. It's not as far open as I wanted, but you probably noticed how stiff that was. We had a helper in here to uh, open it up even further. One solution for the future, assuming that th this buds out and creates some branches down here, is that we could cut all that off and then this becomes our, our secondary trunk line. And then we no longer have this, this problem of, a, of kind of a hole in here. So I think the, the future is opening up a little bit. Uh, we'll put a little movement in, in this branch perhaps. We're going to leave everything else uh, for, for the time being. Um, and then I want to offer an idea of, uh, of how we might approach this in the future. We're only going to wire or bend this section here, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. That section there doesn't matter. You can, uh, if you're using big wire, this is a good trick. Just just hold the, the end of the, the wire with, with your pliers, or you can have a buddy doing that. This is especially useful for really large copper wire, which is really, really thick. Uh, one reason to use aluminum for your deciduous tree is that it's a little bit of a softer metal, and so it can provide a little bit of gentleness on some very tender, usually very thin bark, which is common for the deciduous tree. So where do we put this branch? Do we want to go down with it? Do we want to go up with it? Many fruiting uh, flowering plants have have sort of tumbling branch patterns they go all over the place so some branches that rise are really quite quite natural um, and uh, also this is a this is a, a flower that kind of dangles so my sense of this plant is is that branches that rise would be quite nice because it's countered by a flower that then dangles so i think we will go up uh, with with this this is very stiff so i'm not going to put a lot of, uh, of movement into that at all. That's about it, actually. And we'd probably cut this back into here so we'd have a bend and then we'd have a quick little bend in the future. Alrighty, you're gonna sterilize this wound. That will take just a, a second or two to evaporate. This is uh, isopropyl alcohol, 70%. Um, it kills most germs, not everything, uh, but uh, many of the important ones at any rate. Uh, it gives us a little bit of an advantage uh, to, to put on some uh, cut paste. We are probably going to remove this whole thing in the future. I'm just trying to prevent disease from entering and causing a, more of a problem, but we might even create a shari line down in here. That's something to think about in the future. Um, many of the fruiting and flowering plants that we use as bonsai uh, can take their inspiration from orchard uh, trees, which uh, tend to have orifices and, and sharis and things on them. Um, you can look at the old 
ume for inspiration there, or old apple trees. This is called kirikuchi. It is uh, one of the latex products. You want to go all the way to the, to the bark. That way you're, you're sure to, to cover the, the cambium. This is an interesting product. I have a suspicion that there's gibberellic acid in there. Gibberellic acid is a hormone which will tend to enhance cell division and what that effect is for the, the wound is that you'll find that your callus growth and turning into wound wood grows at a faster rate. And so you can end up closing something faster. As I said, we might be removing that whole thing, but I'm, I'm just doing this as a precaution to prevent uh, some diseases coming into the plant. Um, so while we could have done a lot more with this plant, we could have made it prettier, pruned more, especially wired out more, that's really the wrong thing to do at this phase. We really want to concentrate on this interior core, building that and growing this into the, the larger plant that we're talking about to grow out of the problem.